What up, guys, gals, everyone? This is Tuck Notes, uh, beginner stock talk. My name's Tucker, and today, tonight, we will be covering um, Tesla stock. I will be going over some important um, news um, that will be coming out tomorrow, some important meetings that will be happening tomorrow. Uh, I will give a um, uh, price prediction for tomorrow's uh, Tesla stock. Um, and we will cover what the overall stock market did and a little bit about the stock split. So coming in two, three, two, one now. All right. What up? Let's talk Tesla stock. Basically just was flatlined today. It just barely did much of nothing. And also the overall stock market kind of did the same thing. Um, except for maybe a few sectors were a little bit more, but that's about it. Um, Tomorrow, we have a very important meeting. I don't know what this stands for, but uh, I know that it's very important. I'm transparent. If I don't know something, I will tell you, okay? It's the FOMC meeting, and <laughs> fear for those mother, I don't know, but uh, it's at two o'clock Central Standard Time, so that'll be one o'clock for us in LA three o'clock for New York. And uh, obviously that what's like one o'clock is when the stock market closes for buying shares underneath uh, 1.0. After that, you have to buy a whole share. It just changed that. So it kind of sucks. But um, so here's some good news. There has been talk about expanding Shanghai's factory and creating another factory. In fact, the factory has been created already and they are ramping up cars like you've never seen ever before, meaning they're building cars faster than we've ever seen cars made before. And uh, in addition, they're going to be kicking out another 450,000 cars, more delivery, as per delivery remember we had to catch up to two million cars elon said to be with the norm and so hopefully this with this new shanghai factory or um yeah with them we will crank up at least 10 to 20 percent uh capacity other companies their delivery numbers, our delivery numbers, they were good. Um, but for other EVs companies, theirs were crap. Um, Neo, uh, Li, Auto, those are two Chinese companies. They did not that so hot. Um, so we're gonna go, let's, we're gonna watch a movie um, covering, uh, you know, Tesla's other competitors and how Tesla could potentially compete in this uh, race. And so um, pay attention, please. E Auto and Neo all out with their delivery numbers over the weekend. Our Pras Subramanian is covering that for us. So Pras, um, what have we learned from these automakers and the effect of those COVID related shutdowns in China? Hey, Julie, so really not a big surprise here that you'd see these April delivery numbers come down based on those, those the wave of COVID infections that hitting Shanghai and then resulting areas around that in that time period. You know, both Lee and Neo reporting that their deliveries are down around 25% versus a year ago compared to last year. But Neo said that, quote, vehicle production has been recovering gradually. I think that's a big picture is, is a recovery, right? So according to Chinese officials, Tesla actually has resumed production at its Chinese factory at 80% production uh, because Tesla is part of this first white list of companies that they're doing a staggered uh, production uh, ramp up in these companies in that affected area. So they're starting to open those up. And and then Musk even tweeted about a week and a half ago that Giga, Giga Shanghai was coming back with a vengeance. So I think it's a slow return to normalcy and recovery for these Chinese makers after automakers after a week uh, April 
comparatively speaking, compared to last year. Uh, the word disappointment could be on the docket here with automakers. It's not this week, uh, Pros. It's not just the EV makers. We'll get some auto sales from Ford and General Motors, I believe, this week. And all signs continue to point. A lot of these automakers still have difficulty getting the supply of chips they need to produce enough cars. Yes, as we heard them both talk about that on earnings calls last week. But we also heard them both say that both Ford and GM, and, and at least, that they are seeing things get better and they have assumed that think production will get better in the second half of the year. So there's hope that that could actually uh, affect their production in, in the back half. But like you said, Saz, you never know, right? Because just like last, you know, a year ago, they said the same thing. Oh, the first half of 2022 will be fine. But then more Chinese infections led to chip makers sort of decreased production. That eventually rolled off into these our U.S. automakers not being able to uh, make cars in the Pross, it's not just about Tesla and other automakers that manufacture in, in China. It's also about everybody else that makes stuff in China, right? We can sort of try to read the tea leaves and see if other things are improving as well. You know, we keep looking for turning points, right? We're looking for turning points in inflation. We're looking for turning points in supply chain. We're looking for turning points in the shutdowns there and what they mean. So I guess we're, we're trying to find any kind of, any kind of wrecking, any kind of little glimmer of hope on that front. Yeah, and, I, and I'm I'm sort of t I, you know connecting with this piece that the 80 percent production res resumption at the Tesla Shanghai factory plant is that is good news, and it shows that that the COVID infection rate is coming down. They're they're starting to open that closed loop where they had factories staying in the factories. Now they're able to actually go home, and we're seeing a resumption of normalcy there. So I think Julie, we can kind of uh, cling on to that as a positive sign for the component and chip shortages alleviating themselves. Uh, hopefully we'll see a better situation this summer. But like you said, it's it's so hard to say. We thought we were over this pandemic many, many times, right? And then a different wave happens, and then it sort of spreads across the globe. So in China right now, things appear to be getting better. So hopefully that makes that's good for the automakers as well. So uh, I hope you guys found that informative. Uh, I found it informative. And also the percentages were informative too. So... As I've said in previous videos and in any videos, um, numbers are important. Whenever, our, if I'm mentioning a number or if uh, Elon is, I'm mentioning a number through someone else, uh, through Elon, but if those numbers are being mentioned, you might want to pay attention to that and just be open-minded to thinking about other possibilities that could happen. Uh, personally, so actually, let me stop and say, if you like this video right now, uh, push the like button. That'd be super rad. And if you like these videos, please subscribe to this channel. I, uh, the channel could really use your support. Um, and so tomorrow at 2 p.m., FOMC meeting, interest rate hike going up 50%. What does that mean? S potentially... I don't want to say things that I don't think, but um, that could be a, a sign of stocks going down. So any dip would be a good buy. Uh, most important, uh, so price predictions for this week. I can see Tesla going to up to 950 and down to 850. I also can see Tesla going uh, closer from 950 to 1,000. I can kind of see Tesla going like this and expanding like that and then just having a big gap of numbers going up and down. More so probably down and up, but who knows? There's a lot of uh, um, bell curves uh, or... Uh, they said it in the video with Kathy Woods. Kathy Woods very well explained it, but um, bottlenecks, um, turns in the graphs that they're actually underlyingly referring to, uh, and that will be changing the stock when you think it's gonna go this way, it's actually gonna go that way, because it did that in its previous movement. Whatever happened in the past reflects the future, pretty much. That is one of the rules off of Wyckoff, and, and I see it, and it actually has helped. I'm still learning, though, trying to do this backwards and upside down. It's kind of really hard to figure out, 
But um, that's about it you're going to get from me tonight. I hope you guys and gals and everyone has a nice night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.